Sunday school class, Reverend Phil Anderson here with you. It is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. So we are so glad to have you with us, whether you're watching live this morning on Facebook or whether you are watching this a little bit later. We are just delighted to have you. This is the third Sunday of Easter. So remember, Easter was April 4th and we had the 11th and 18th. So this is considered the third Sunday of Easter. And we continue to rejoice in the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And it is a blessing to just think about these things as we go forth into our weeks. And, you know, I was kind of wondering, what do we do after Lent? What do we do after Easter? Because it's so easy just to sort of hit that climax, you know, and just kind of let things go down a little bit. We just take the foot off the accelerator and we just sort of coast for a while. And now I'm thinking, no, it's it's kind of what I was hoping. I just feel like everybody's gung ho. We're ready to keep going forward here. And that is the plan as we are moving now into the latter part of April. Matter of fact, looks like we might get some snow. Did you see that on Tuesday morning? So I've got to get my heavy clothes out again. Really, I didn't never put them away. I normally don't put stuff up till the middle of May. I just learned too many times not to, uh, not to put stuff up. It seems like as soon as I do, that's the sure sign we're going to get some snow. Kind of like when you wash your car and then it rains that night, right? Y'all done that? So, looking really forward to our service today. I'm hoping it's going to be an encouragement. We're going to look at First John and chapter 3, verse 27. Talk about how we live our lives so that we are our believers. I think it adds to that question, where do we go from here? Kind of like what we were saying after Easter. Now, now what? Where we do, where we do from here, because we have a momentous season of Lent, Easter, and that great corpus, even though it was a little bit more subdued, granted, this year than in some years, at least, at least we still got to meet as a church family. But now, where do we go? And I think this, these certain these uh, passages here really help lead us now into that area that we go to. I'm not going to read the scriptures for the services. We'll do that in the service. I do want to read one, however, and it's going to be the one from the gospel, um, which we will read in the service. But there's a part of this that I think is real interesting. Jesus now is responding. And, you know, he comes back to his disciples. And, and y'all ever heard of that expression? It's just too good to be true, you know. And, and I believe the disciples really understood that this was Jesus standing there in front of them, and yet it was almost too good to be true. I mean, when they had imagined themselves, everything they had hoped for and dreamed of had come crashing to the end on the cross of Calvary, only to see Jesus Christ rise from the dead, even though he told them he was going to do it. It just was hard for them to really gather that and to really grasp it. And so now Jesus has not only risen from the dead, but now the disciples. And he stands among them, and he says to them, Peace be with you. Now, Jesus, throughout the scriptures, would often say things of this nature. Fear not. When the disciples were seeing Jesus walk on the water, he told them to fear not. We, we, we see this whole theme really throughout all of the scriptures. Fear not. And we, we put our trust in God that takes down our fear. It really eliminates our fear because if we have faith, and then faith basically throws the knockout punch to fear every time. And so we have nothing to fear. You know, God is with us. He's going to get us through these things. We were talking recently about 1 Peter 5, 7, that great verse, cast all your cares upon him who cares for you. I love that because we oftentimes, I think we just carry things around where we're, we're afraid to let them go. I think that's why we carry them with us, all of our concerns and these things, and then they become anxiety, and they just keep picking us up, kind of like before that you see and not. You, you know, you have at home, I, I deal with them probably on a weekly basis somewhere, so I have to unwind the cord. Yeah. And so that is kind of what we do with our 
it's really hard for me to do that. And I mean, I've shared this, and it's kind of hard to know where I've shared it, where I have it. I hope I'm just repeating myself. I know I said about the daily bread that I recorded, I think, yesterday. Because it was for a few weeks down the road. So I'll give you a sneak peek if you listen to our uh, Fresh Bread uh, as I get to call them the broadcast. It hit me the other day it was when I was walking with my wife. Almost like a wheel. Every click of the wheel, there's a concern. And if I get rid of that one, then it goes to the next one. And it clicks all the way through. And it just kind of click, 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 click. There's a concern. I just can't just go around smoothly. There's a click everywhere that I can think about it and feel it. And I believe that's not what God wants. And it really took me to just realize that the other day. You know, you're talking about this. And you've got to practice it. So I believe a lot of it is you just pray about it and you got to let it go. And, and that is the hardest thing in the world sometimes. You have to let it go. And, and so we have to let go of the fear. Well, I wonder if when Jesus said, peace be with you, if he realized there was fear amongst those people. I imagine he probably understood that full well. The disciples were wondering again what was going on. Now here's Jesus, and were they afraid? Were they filled with joy? Were they filled with wonder? Well, I think a little bit of all of the above. Because here's what Jesus says in verse 37, the next verse. It says, they were startled and terrified. Now if that doesn't mean they're afraid, I don't know what it does. Fearful. Here Jesus has always told them, don't fear. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. And they thought they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said to them, why are you frightened? And why do you doubt? In your so, so you see two things going on here. When, when, when you're fearful, you're frightened, you're going to have doubt. Those two are just like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> they just go together. And that's why I tell people, don't doubt. Doubt is like the entry point for fear. Um, I know people who say, well, it's okay to doubt. I've never thought it was okay to doubt. I mean, I mean, God will deal with our doubts, granted. I mean, I don't think that's going to be like sin he doesn't forgive, or whether it is even a sin. But I believe he wants us to come to him in full faith, full belief. So I just don't see any room for doubt and faith at the same time. They're there. At odds with each other. One will be present and the other will be absent. I don't think you can have faith and doubt coexisting. And we have to train ourselves not to doubt. If you're a person who doubts, then then try to get through that and ask God to get rid of those doubts. Not to doubt. And we're going to function in faith. And then what do we have instead of doubt? That little void, that vacuum we fill in with our we just continue to believe. We bring that faith up. It's like fanning a fire, you know. You just do this, and that little spark, pretty soon the fire just really starts raging. And we all been around a camp. We've seen a fire kind of start out big, and it kind of goes down. Well, that's maybe how our faith is sometimes. You either throw another log on it, or you fan it, and it flares right back up. And that's what our faith will do. So I believe Jesus understood that, and, and he wanted them to to believe in him. And he also met them at their point of need, where if they couldn't believe him, he, he told them, he touched me and see. And when he said that, he showed them his hands and feet. And I like this, while in their joy, they were disbelieving. I think they were in that process. Is this really true? Is this really, is this, is this really happening? I believe that at that moment, their, their doubts were fading away and their joy and their faith I think we're seeing the decline of fear and the increase in faith here just in reading this today. And then I think it's interesting where Jesus asked if he had got anything to eat and they gave him a piece of broiled fish. I like that. It was broiled, not baked, not fried. <laughs> I like that broiled fish. I love the little things that the Bible has in it, things of that nature. So. That's where we're at today. I want to uh, keep this re relatively short. Um, I want to give you time to get here. If you're coming to Oakland, we, we we are excited for our service today. Next week, I'm really excited, too. I, I've already got a sneak peek at the 25th of April. Now, I've never done a sermon. Now, of course, I've just been in the actual pastoral ministry for about 
I guess 21, 22 months now. I've never done a sermon based exclusively on the psalm. Now, we talk about the psalm. We usually read a psalm in service week. But next week, I just couldn't pass this one up. It's Psalm 23. And so come prepared for that one. Read Psalm 23 this week. If you're watching this before April the 25th, 2021, you can come to service and be prepared. We'll try to start giving a little heads up to the sermon, the sermon scriptures for the week before we let everybody kind of brush up on it so that when they come, they'll have a little better feel for it. We were doing that in our bulletins at one time. I'm kind of waiting that. Maybe we'll start that. Anyway, looking forward to Psalm 23 next week, one of the great psalms. Yeah, maybe you can memorize it. I've never read it. And it's a great one to memorize. Lord's Prayer and some of the scripture verses working on, which we will do again tonight, God willing, around the when we do our route to the memory. With that, I will let you go. I see Polly's watching. Thank you for being here. Good to have you here. Hope to see you at church here in a little bit. And it is now about. 855. So we're going to go ahead and conclude today at this point. We are excited for the services. If you can come again, 930 here at Oakland, 801 Northeast Chester, here on April 18th. And then we'll be over at Sixth Avenue at 11 o'clock here this morning, 1020 in the notes of our district. So hope to see you at one of the other services. And thanks again for joining me today on our Sunday school class. Very short one, but hopefully it'll be a little bit of an inspiration for you. And again, we hope we'll see you here in a few minutes. Y'all take care. Have a good day.